So we got a little bit of a more interesting kind of video for, I guess, those who care about this. Unsure how long it will be, though. Um, so we've always argued, who's better, Thielen or Diggs? Well, they've both missed six games without each other now. So we kind of have a sample size of what the other one does for the other, at least in terms of a numbers standpoint. So we'll start with Adam Thielen's numbers. And Thielen, um, they each have games where, like, they do really well, but then there's other games where they don't. Like Thielen, the first game that he missed with that one, no, the first game Diggs missed and Thielen was playing on the field, Thielen went 7 of 8 targets for 127, a touchdown, and 18.1 average. It's pretty good. But, on the other hand, he also had a game where he only was targeted once. He caught it, and it was only for 7 yards. So, um, they each have games like that. But, in total, Thielen, without digs, has caught 34 of 52 targets for 346 yards, a 10.2 average. Two touchdowns, and even though it's probably not really a stat that matters for this particular argument, I thought this was interesting. Um, they are 5-1 and one when Diggs isn't playing and Thielen is. So, but the average stat line he has per game without Diggs is he has 5.7 receptions on 8.7 targets for 57.7 yards, a 10.1 average and 0.33 touchdowns a game as far as the averages go. And that might not seem like valuable intel unless you have just the normal per game average which is this. The 5.7 receptions doesn't change his 8.7 targets changes to 8.1. So he's basically getting one less target a game. However, the yards go from 57.7 to 75.3 when Diggs is just there. And, well, normal average anyway. And then his average yards per catch go from 10.1 to 13.2. And the touchdowns go from 0.33 to 0.4. Now, Diggs, it's all been this year. Um... And I didn't include in, include the first Detroit game where Thielen got hurt just because Thielen did catch a touchdown and they prepared for him. But I did include the Kansas City game, even though technically Thielen played, but it was like two or three plays and he didn't make a catch. So I was like, I'm not going to include that. Um, but yeah, kind of similar where we kind of saw – Diggs go off initially. He cut seven of seven for 143 in a 20.4 average. And but he also has a game where in Kansas City he caught one of five targets for four yards. So but we have those kinds of games. And then his average without Thielen has been catching 4.3 passes a game on 6.8 targets for 72.3 yards per game an average of 16.8, and touchdown of .17, which is not ideal for the touchdown number. But the normal average, the 4.3, like Thielen's 5.7, stays the same. His 6.8 drops down to 6.4, so he's really not getting targeted any less, and he's not doing anything um, along those lines, really. And... His 72.3 yards goes to 76.7, average from 16.8 to 17.8, and a touchdown of 0.17 to 0.4. So the discrepancy is quite large, where you almost have 20 yards difference on Adam Thielen going from 57.7 to 75.3, where Diggs just increases by 4, where it's 72.3 to 76.7. And I kind of thought these numbers might well, come to this just because, well, Diggs is the deep threat. So if I had any, oh, he's at least the deeper threat of the two. And if I had any idea, it's like, 
if you take away Diggs, it's probably going to affect Thielen a lot more just because Thielen, his main thing is going underneath. You give him one-on-one underneath, he can beat anybody. But when you take away Diggs and that attention is gone to take off the top, all of a sudden you can just kind of suffocate that up front because you don't really have much of a vertical passing game. And that's kind of the, the issue with that. I think that's why you see just the big difference where with Diggs, the real difference is the touchdowns just because, well, ultimately Diggs will still make plays if Thielen isn't there. But what really won't happen is he won't be catching all of the touchdowns just because, well, it's easier to kind of make sure he doesn't at least score when you don't have to worry about that underneath threat, when you don't have to put an extra guy up there just to be able to say, okay, 19 can't beat us, but you got to make sure 14 doesn't get behind you. That's It's easier to kind of get the score once you can get behind him when Thielen's occupying the whole middle of the field. So... That's why his touchdown number there is so bipolar, I think. And um, I think both are very, very good at what they do. Just I think they complement each other so well. And I just think if you were to say one is better, it depends what you mean by better, I guess. Because I think my version of it would be which one can survive on his own. And to me, that's Diggs. I feel like Diggs can survive better on his own because they're very similar players when it comes to their route running. Just the real difference with them is the fact that one is faster and one can take the top off. So, yeah. The other odd thing, without Thielen, they are 4-2 and two currently. And then without Diggs, they are 5-1. and one. Uh, not really something I think should factor into this conversation, but it's it's interesting how that's also similar. Um, but yeah, I thought this was an argument forever, and people have always debated it. And it's like, well, we kind of have a sample size now, so let's see how this stacks up. And this is how this has stacked up, and it's kind of not surprised me. I was kind of hoping Thielen's numbers would be a little better than this. I'm a little surprised it's that large of a difference, at least in yardage, where he's catching three more yards per catch on average, going from 10.1 to 13.2, and nearly 20 yards on 57.7 to 75.3. But for Diggs, it's like a yard difference in terms of average and 72.3 to 76.7. So, yeah, I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comments below if, basically, if you think these numbers are whack. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Liking, subscribing always helps, and until next time, I bid y'all adieu.